All right, guys, welcome to another Search and Seizure show. Uh, my name is Anthony Bandiero. I'm an attorney and senior legal instructor for a blue to gold law enforcement training. This is what I do for a living. I have the honor and the privilege to train cops around the nation in search and seizure. Who is sitting next to me? My name is Mike Boone, and I have that same honor. Yeah, you do teach search and seizure. I do. Uh, for blue to gold. I do teach for blue to gold, and I got a part-time gig where I work full-time. <laughs> <laughs> that pays the bills. As, a, as a, an academy instructor, yeah. Well, good. Well, <laughs> we ain't going to pay you what you make over there, so that's good. <laughs> well. All right. So uh, do me a favor. We have Rick, the producer, with us. Um, and then also, Mike, your eyes are probably better than mine. So if, uh, yeah, just make that little chat box a little bigger, yeah. Rick. And then um, if you have any, if you see any questions in there. I'll have you uh, read them and so forth. Sounds good to me. All right. So look, this is the purpose of the show. We're here to this, you know, two, um, you know, very educated search and seizure experts. Um, I, th I think I can say with confidence. I think I've worked hard enough to say that we are uh, educated. At least I can speak for myself. You, I mean, you are from Missouri, you know. True. So educated, it's a, relative. It's a relative term. Yeah, it's a relative term. Yeah, you, you say Missouri. Uh, <laughs> kidding aside, we love our peeps in Missouri. In fact, aren't you going there pretty soon to teach for us? I will be in Branson in two weeks. Man, that's gonna that's a big uh, MOCIC convention down there. So what's uh, what's that conference? So that's the uh, it's gonna be. Gosh, there's all it's kinds like, of like Missouri officers, Missouri officers. I think nine states are involved. Okay, there, all through the Midwestern region, uh, all kinds of different uh, breakout sessions. Oh, it's, that's great. It's gonna be fun. All right. So the purpose of the show is to answer your questions. You know, we're we're trying to, you know, build the show up. You know, hopefully it will catch on. And you know, if it's something that you guys like, um, they can support us by hitting the like button. They can ask questions, but really the thing that we're asking you to do is if you have questions, this is the place to answer them. In fact, um, Rick, the producer, is not going to like this, but if you come on live and answer your question, we're going to give you a prize. Oh, I like, we want to incentivize like people. I like it. Okay, cool. So you come on, and all you got to say is uh, just in the chat, say, <laughs> me, uh, I have a question. Say something like that, and we'll put you, we'll turn your mic on, and that will hear you. Now, you, we don't see them. Nope. They can only see our beautiful faces, and we don't, we can only hear them. Correct. And also, we can only, um, you know, we can only uh, hear you if you, you know, consent to that. So just kind of, right. let's get down to business, my friend. With Dan, I like Daniel here, though. Bourbon and guns. Yeah, actually, my this kind, is my kind of people. <laughs> I like to say this is the ATF. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. The only thing is we're missing is tobacco. Yeah. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't do tobacco no. products. But, um, you know, maybe my brother can show his fine cigars. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but. This is the closest. To, this is the kind of. This is the actually the ATF that I like. Yeah, yeah. The other ATF, they're not in my good graces. Mm -hmm. You know that because well, I'm a gun guy, and they're not. You are. They, quite, they seem to be anti-gun. Little. You are quite the gun guy. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Might be an understatement. It might be an understatement. <laughs> All right, for sure. So here's the deal. You ever heard of a case called U.S. versus Landeros? Yeah. Is that case out of Arizona? It's the one mm -hmm. where involved in that traffic stop and the passenger with the ID issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason I bring that up is because I want to share with you a little bit of uh, what happened. So this this one came in uh, fresh off the presses. Okay, it's still kind of the the laser print let is me, still uh, wet. Let me let me touch it with intent yeah. to gather information there. <laughs> oh, you do you want to trespass on my papers? Yeah. So this is an officer from Pocatello Police Department, Idaho. He says, you know, can we force identify passengers under case law? So he says, hey, look, there's this case out of Idaho called Wharton versus Idaho. And you may not know that case, but I had to read it today. And it's contradicting contradicting a U.S. versus Landeros case from the Ninth Circuit. Okay. Now, um, what you know, it seems like can we? He's basically saying, "Hey, can we ask for ID from passengers? Can we force ID?" And I don't know what to do. So, all right. Do you do you know enough about Landeros to tell the audience what Landeros is about? And give me is a Reader's the, Digest guy that. The the truck guy wrecked in the ditch guy. Or am I thinking of something? No, nah, you think about something else. Something about something else. Okay, let me tell you what happened on Landros. It's a, just a jogging memory. Yeah. So what happened here is an Arizona uh, tribal officer. I think mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really matter, but a tribal officer stopped a vehicle for traffic, and land he wanted he wanted ID from Landros, who's oh, the passenger. The girls in the back. The girls were the in the girls back. Girls in the back. There we go. And so, mm -hmm. um, but he didn't articulate that. He just basically said, you know, hey, I want your ID. Mm -hmm. Landros is like, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, leave me alone. Leave me alone type right. stuff. And he says, no, I'm going to, you, know, you you have to ID under Arizona state law, which is, you know, Arizona is a stop and identify law, right? right. So if you have reasonable suspicion, you can compel somebody to identify. Mm -hmm. And so is Nevada where we're at right now. Well, he ends up arresting uh, Landros for that obstruction. Mm -hmm. And when he goes to the court, he gives that lame ass excuse of, well, it's, it's for officer safety. That's the way I do business type of stuff. Does that work in 2023? No, not at all. 
Not at all. <laughs> now, do you remember enough facts about the case? Because actually, when you look at it, Landros could have actually compelled his ID. Do you remember why? Could have compelled it? Yes. Well, in my view. So are you talking about with the with the young girls? With the involvement of the young girls, right? Because he believed them to be under the intoxication of alcohol, Bingo. right? And believed them to be under 21. That's right. So then if that's the case, well, then now you've got reasonable suspicion to believe that there's contributing to minors there's an investigation to be done right I man that's so great because that that's that isn't that something that we see all the time right we see officers really doing like they're doing good police work like mm -hmm. they're doing the right thing but when it comes to the report they stink yes, and yes, nobody wants like everybody wants to run and gun right but nobody wants to run and write like <laughs> i mean it, it sucks right i mean i get it oh yeah but isn't the re the police report like maybe the most important part of the of the actual investigation absolutely okay absolutely um and you were talking about that in fact you had a webinar um just before this this webinar called uh, cis and search warrants and you can also watch that on youtube by the way for the people watching on youtube so it's gonna be posted probably later tonight when it when it uploads and you said i thought it was kind of interesting you said there was a very powerful word in the police report what, what word was that because Right. It's the word because it makes you explain what you just said. And uh, it's like, so when cops say, you know, I had the person down for because I believe he was armed and dangerous. Right. That's not enough. I believe he was armed and dangerous because. Right. Because of all these factors. So going back to Landros, um, he was, you know, the, the, the Ninth Circuit said that your rationale just makes you keep uh, and Rick, the producer. If you see any questions or anybody wants a, a mic, can you just let us know, too? And um and so he 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 compels this ID. He makes the arrest. It's a bad arrest because the the rash he's not uh, doing is justified. But here's the kicker: um, not only could he have identified because the women they were underage, intoxicated. When they got him out of the car, they actually found the bottle of booze hidden under his uh, legs. Mm. So he he was contributing to the, to a minor. Now let's go back to Wharton. Wharton is a a case where, in fact, I might actually have a little something printed out. But Wharton is a case where. Um, the officer asked, he asked a passenger for his ID okay. and he ran the guy and he came back with a warrant search instant to arrest. We find evidence. Now, do you think that violates what we're talking about in Landros? In Landros? No. Ask? Fine. Yeah. Consent, right? You consent. Now, what's interesting too, this is a case from 2022. I, I've always been cautious, at least for my officer, the ninth circuit, to be careful about running people and that's, adding time. That's the why well, the kind of like yeah the ask part. Okay, How, but but now mm -hmm. now just so you know, Idaho is saying good to go. No word, no concerns about it. No, extension. they said that actually it's part of a traffic stop because it's officer safety. Okay, and it also adds a negligible amount of time. And what's interesting is that the Ninth Circuit has started using that language in another case um, called United States versus Taylor, twenty twenty three where if you're just adding a negligible amount of time, mm -hmm. you know, then it's not going to violate uh, the U.S. Supreme Court restrictions on prolonging a stop. Now, now, would you would you intertwine negligible with reasonable? Reasonable, yes. Mm -hmm. And also, yes, reasonable. And I don't I don't want to use the word de minimis because, you know, de minimis is a law as a doctrine right. that says it's it's so minimal that mm -hmm. we can't complain about it. That there's, yeah. But it's also just like I do believe that if you ask a passenger for their ID, that two things are going on. Number one is maybe they are maybe implicitly consenting to be to be run, because that's what cops want to do with IDs. Argument for it, yeah. But also, I do think it, it's rationally related to the, to the traffic stop. I mean, if you got a person who's a fugitive for murder, I do think that's something that we should know during mm -hmm. a, a routine traffic stop. And I mean, you know, I've read tons of cases where the courts are always and hold in high regard the inherent dangerousness of traffic stops mm -hmm. and the unknown of the persons inside that vehicle has always yeah. been a concern of the course for us. Okay. So now I, what I, what I like to teach in my classes is, is, Hey, fine. You know, you, you stop a car with a couple people and then you got a driver, passenger, maybe two passengers, you run them. Okay. According to Wharton, I, I, I kind of dig it. I like it. Um, if you want to, if you want to run them, it shouldn't really run afoul of the fourth amendment. I do agree with that by the way, but what about six people? Seven. seven what about a passenger yeah. van what about a greyhound bus i mean yeah. so there then, might be a limit to it yeah then you start getting measurably extending yeah all right um so that's what i have that's that's the first question all right so i would love to get somebody on the uh the chat here to actually ask a live question remember you get a little free prize mm -hmm. if you do all right we got somebody right here now who we got come on okay the, the producer saying no you can use your words by the way <laughs> I mean, not to be weird about it, right? 
<laughs> all right. This is all right. This is this is actually a good one. So this this one I don't think you even know about Mike because I oh, this, okay. these are ones that came in today. Oh, hot, hot. They they are. So this is a, a cop out of Topeka, Kansas. Okay. And he says, okay, now he's starting to talk about my red, yellow, green curly ah, codes. Curtilage. Curtilage. I don't speak, I don't speak so you French. You speak French. I do not speak French. Can you give the listeners here, the, the watchers here, like a quick, quick down and dirty um, uh, training on what are curtilage codes? All right. Our quick curtilage codes are green, open fields. You can be there. Streets, public sidewalks. That's where you can be without any justification. Yellow is kind of the idea of responding to a call for service or doing a knock and talk. Mm -hmm. How would you access the front door to a house? Would you walk across a driveway to get to the front door? That's where we could go. Red color code is going to be your areas up next to the house, the landscaping around the side yards, away from those points where you would make contact at the house. And for those circumstances, you're going to have to need some sort of uh, urgency, emergency. Uh, a need to be over there. So that's pretty quick down and down to it. All right. So mm -hmm. curlage color codes is just this idea that when you're on curlage, you know, you shouldn't, you should basically have a reason for being on it and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Now this cop has an arrest warrant. Okay. And it's for a violent suspect and they want to go to the house and basically do a knock and talk to see if he is there and so forth. They also want to put an officer in the back of the, in the backyard. Okay. What's your advice there? My first, and we're not a tactic show, so let's just, if this guy's known to be violent, I would just throw a little caution out there, cautionary on the knock and talk. Mm. Just, right, maybe. Just depending on what's going depends on. Depends on it depends on if he's like, hey, I'm not going back to prison. I'm going right. to shoot it out with police kind of guy. Yeah. It might be something that you get the SWAT team involved. Yeah. But that's going to kind of roll into what we're talking about here. So if we have information that a person is violent or has uh, you know statements made to that, well, then now we look in our color codes, then there's going to be some of that yellow component that may allow us to go in a few other places that we wouldn't traditionally go because, there's the word, there is an, uh, a statement to be made that it may be advantageous for us for a true officer safety concern. Okay, but how are you? How are we getting into that backyard? I mean, yeah, we have an arrest warrant and we may think he's home, mm -hmm. but what gives us the right to go into somebody's backyard? Well, the restaurant gives us the right to go in his house. Oh, with a few conditions. It's valid arrest warrant. Mm -hmm. We know it's home, his home. Yeah, it's probably because it's home. Yep. Do we know he's there? Do we have reason to believe he's there? Yes, we do. So, to answer that, the arrest warrant allows us to make entry into the home. Well, mm -hmm. the backyard is protected like the home itself, so we can most definitely okay. go to that backyard. All right. So then, you know, so he says, "All right, so we got that." Um, I, you know. We go in there, and he actually says that they did go into the. Well, he actually gives a case where they they looked in a small trunk to see if a person was in there, and they could probably search anywhere where the person could be, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. I don't think so. So, what if we do not have an arrest warrant, and this time it's an attempt to locate the person with just probable cause for a violent felony? Can we go into the backyard now? I think that's going to go a little bit kind of what I touched on before. <laughs> Caution. Okay. Uh, but the, the ability to branch out into someone's curtilage, okay. protected like the home itself, is going to take justification, articulation, some mm -hmm. sort of why. Why you needed to be there. What, what, do you think you need agency to be into the backyard? Yes. Okay. So if we have probable cause mm -hmm. for a violent felony, let's say this guy killed somebody, mm -hmm. does that alone get you into the backyard for officer safety? No. It doesn't, right? No. Because a man's house is his castle. And we don't breach the castle unless we have the king's permission, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, okay. All right. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Um, you know, our producer here is going to say if we have any questions and so forth. Yeah. Actually, Sean says we also have no exceptions to the murder rule. Sean, why don't you make me proud? What case is that about the no exception even for a murder? Sean's going to know this because Sean's actually one. Sean, of, Sean will he's, know this. Yeah. He's our search <laughs> seizure. He's a search seizure instructor for us, Sean. He took our CSSI class. Sweet. Sean, you don't know the, the case where the Supreme Court said you could not enter a man's home to arrest him for murder without a uh, without a warrant? I feel like there was a delay tonight, like on the responses. Someone. Mm. Oh. Well, no, no, because the trivia worked fine. Say yes I'm or no, trying Sean. To, I'm trying to give you an out, Sean. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to give you an <laughs>
I'll give you no. I'll give you the city, New York. <laughs> New don't, don't, York. Try to, don't try to sing on the show. Now you're embarrassing yourself. There it is. Nathan got it. All right, Peyton. All right, per- Peyton versus New York. All right. So here is a very interesting scenario. Okay, again, you do not know about this because okay. I just got these fresh out the presses. I just want to kind of read them. You ready for this? In Massachusetts, okay. officers were inside a home investigating a domestic violence. Okay. They had their body cams on. So they do what they're going to do, and they, let's say they don't arrest anybody, okay? But they're inside the home for the domestic. Okay. Uh, let's just assume like two months later, um, in, no, I'm sorry, not two months, two weeks later, investigators with a, with with another unit let's say a gun a gun team right mm-hmm. they're surfing social media and they see a known felon showing off his guns on social media okay and in the background is distinct curtains and they have intel that he is actually living at the house where the domestic occurred you saw okay. me so far okay. yeah and they want to they want to get a warrant because they want to get a warrant for that gun. Okay. Now, here's what they do. They look at the body cam and they look to see if on the body cam mm-hmm. was the were the curtains. Oh. Because if the curtains are in the body cam, then he was taking those then selfies that's... from that house. Oh, okay. And there's your nexus. Yeah. It's only been 2 weeks. There's your probable cause probably for the for a warrant to go be right. Mm-hmm. So the officers got, of course, they, that's what it, it was the house, right? The curtains proved that they were at the right house, that the, that the person took the pictures from the right house. So the curtains matched. The curtains matched the drapes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so they, they get the warrant. They find the gun. We're in court. What do, now the, the defendant is challenging what? He's saying you cannot look at the body cam. Mm-hmm. You can't review it for new evidence. What does your intuition say? You don't know this wow. case, right? Gosh. That, just so right honest. I've heard something like this, and I don't remember the way the court went, but that, that's a very, my audience it's a very interesting question. Because Matt, Matthew says not allowed. Brooke says, I disagree. He thinks it is allowed. What do you guys think? So my first thought on it is, it's information we gathered lawfully present. They, During okay. investigation. Let me tell you what they said. Yes. And the court found that being in the house and having the body cam on was not a search that fell under plain view. Yeah. Okay. So what about this re-reviewing of the that's, body? That's going to be the kicker. So, But it's video that we possess, we house, we have access to. But to, to look at it again, to review. Now, the, the officer didn't attest it was all through the body worn camera view that's correct that the yeah the, mm-hmm. the cop on scene didn't say yeah there was these pinstripe right. curtains so i guess it's gonna come down to did uh did a search occur did it you know did it occur again there and answer the damn question I, I, i'm just trying to think through the logic of this here it's something we possess they don't have an expectation of privacy or a video that we took for them hmm. i don't know i don't feel comfortable saying yes for some reason but i don't see how they protect that from what we lawfully already saw okay the supreme court of massachusetts said in 2021 that this was a search under the fourth amendment really they said that going into the home was lawful and that that was not a search okay however they said i'm not quoting this as a summary Mm -hmm. okay they said that this is by the way this is commonwealth versus yusuf 488 mass massachusetts Mm -hmm. that's how they breathe it uh, 379 2021 so again commonwealth ver- versus you i'm sorry y u s u f 2021 they said warrantless investigatory review of video footage from police officers body worn camera unrelated to a domestic disturbance call in which footage was recorded in the defendant's home was subject to a separate constitutional analysis like a cat's analysis yep from issue of whether this was a search under the Fourth Amendment. And here's the thing, my friend. Couldn't disagree more. I think the I think Massachusetts got it wrong. So because it, it's almost a, out of the bag. It's it's, it's, it's to me. Uh, so let's I, I, it, mm. it, 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 it can't be right. It can't be right. Because here's the deal, okay? If if this is right, 
then I mean, it, it, first of all, we need bright line rules and we, yeah. and we need some sanity here. So how can the court say on one side of their mouth, hey, having this video footage is not a search, but because, looking at it yeah. again for a different reason is yes. a search. I mean, let me, let me, can I give you an example? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. riddle you with a bunch of scenarios, okay? You're in a home and you see, um, you see uh, uh, property in plain view mm -hmm. that you think to yourself, dude, dude, that's stolen. That's stolen property. You have probable cause. You seize it. Okay. Okay. So then a, a detective for a homicide, he has he has he's he heard he heard that you have this piece of evidence it's okay. a very unique um like uh jewelry box that has like the musical you know musical jewelry box and so forth right and he heard that you have this and and he has that that musical box is tied into a murder that he's working it's kind of weird but it is what it is like it. so he wants to take that out of evidence and look at it and have and take a picture and have his witness confirm whether or not that's the jewelry box involved in this murder case right mm -hmm. are we good yeah, of course we are. Yeah. So <laughs> why isn't this the same thing? You know why it's not the same thing? Because it's Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts is a very liberal state mm -hmm. and they don't like stuff like that. They're worried about maybe, you know, big brother type stuff. But this is the cops are lawfully present. So can I give you another example? You would, tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, I would love to. <clears throat> Officers here. They, OK, so a um, a cops are I'm sorry, the supervisor is randomly reviewing body cam footage for impropriety right now wait, not wait. every agency can just do that checking up on his guys yes uh, now many agencies can do that can or can't no can oh just just just, just creeping just speeding, creeping okay talking, um, talking, I, talking I don't think your agency boss. can do that because oh. but that's because the union doesn't want it okay right. and they won that battle but a lot of a lot of uh, agencies mm -hmm. can do it so a sergeant is randomly reviewing video okay and um he sees he watches the domestic and he sees that his he's looking for basically uh rude and discourteous okay stuff like that right okay but while he's in there without a complaint just looking to see yeah no it's, it's shocking to you but that's uh, yeah. not everybody's like your agency okay <laughs> this is not the most gotcha. this is, yeah this is right. kind of a common thing that <laughs> supervisors are allowed to look at their videos to see if their officers are on the up and up and so forth so while he's looking at this video for you know for rude and discourteous and so forth he mm -hmm. sees something about another case that he was working and he says holy crap that is the piece of that's a pro that's a stolen property mm -hmm. that was taken from a from a burglary case that I took two weeks prior. Is that coming in? I almost see it as it's it's almost as if that supervisor is standing on the scene himself, right? I mean, but why can't he re you know, maybe not? Well, I mean, but why can't he re, re why just like you said, the video is in the possession of the police of department. Yeah. What constitution, what constitutional uh, you know, uh, doctrine mm -hmm. says that he cannot look at the very thing that the police uh, possess? Right. It doesn't make any sense, okay? So this officer who asked me this question is in the in, in Indiana, okay? And he's he's like, "What you know, what do you think about this?" I'm saying, "Bullshit. Massachusetts, I I can't like I understand in some degree what they're saying, okay? I mean, I'm a rational person. I understand mm -hmm. their concern. But I just don't understand. We have line drawing problems here, okay? I mean, you can look at it for the IA. Would the, would the, would the court say, nah, you you know, union, union mm -hmm. contract aside. No, you can't even look at it for IA issues. Yeah. You know, you can only look for it to help prove your original domestic. It doesn't it's, make any it's sense. Too, it's too specific. It's, it's too, too specific. Yeah, it's unwieldy. It doesn't have a constitutional footing. Mm -hmm. It's it's line drawing problems up the wazoo. We know that cops have looked at um, you know uh, evidence under other issues. I'll give you an example. Maybe it's not similar, but we have a Supreme Court case called Edwards. Uh, I forget. It's a, it's a case involving uh, a person who got arrested for breaking into a post office. It might be anyway. I'll, I'll remember Murray. It's Murray. So uh, so Murray breaks into a post office. His his possessions are in the jail custody and investigators come back to the jail they get his possessions and they re, re they they look at him again and they find chips from a um from paint chips mm -hmm. and they actually do, they this is 1970s but they they do a forensic analysis and they 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 prove that those chips came from the burglary when he broke into the place okay i mean to me i guess it's like almost similar like how are you well no it's the same crime isn't it yeah they're looking for the same crime. no they yeah, it is the same crime. all right 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah, just like that. You step back, like society on this, and like eh, society's like the cops got it. Yeah, it's, it's their stuff. So yeah, yeah. Let me see. I want to read some of these comments. And my eyesight's not as good as yours. Mm. So I believe. But hold on, Anthony, our prosecutor was okay. And this is this is by the way, this is our mm. uh, our 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 person who asked the question. He said, our prosecutor was good with it. We just also had, uh, we also had other means to verify our tr- uh, target address to double cover ourselves. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah. But I think that I would love, you know, for a, um, for a prosecutor to push this in another state. Like yeah, Massachusetts is not Indiana. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not, it, it's not Texas. So. Especially if you start running the analysis that you, we've been talking about. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. So Jonathan, yeah, yeah. So David says, I believe this ruling it would be in the, his best interest at that point to stop the search. First of all, it's, I, I'm sorry, it's not a search. Not search. It's just it's a view. Yeah. And apply for a warrant based on new discovery. I just, okay, fine. I mean, I, I but if, but it doesn't. You don't win that way. If you, mm-hmm. if you, if you listen to Massachusetts, yeah, you're, you're about, you're not going to fix it. No, because it's still unlawful. Yeah. You still have the fruit of the poisonous tree. Mm-hmm. So watch away. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're saying go get a warrant, you're saying that you have a you need a warrant, I guess. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. Look, it ain't going to work. All right. So. Um, I think Matthew, I think exactly. I think I think that that is something that the courts would consider in Massachusetts. I think mm-hmm. that Matthew, I think that if the not, not Matthew from Indiana, but I think that if the, the cops said we are just trying to confirm his her injuries. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to articulate what how what words she used. They're not going to have a problem with that. No, because as the court said, they're focused on the DV. Okay, and so then while you're listening to her exact words, he beat the shit out of me. I just want to get this right. <laughs> you you see the curtains, and you realize that the curtains are part of another investigation you're working. Are mm-hmm. we good there then? Yes. See the problem so line drawing yeah. problems. Yeah. I was never a good artist, but I can't draw straight lines with this logic. Yeah. And that's the problem. So I'm sorry. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to teach it. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's cops can't work with something like that. Mm-hmm. What you got there? You see anything? Uh, Dave said the initial intent was not to search for evidence. Well, it was right. They, mm-hmm. they went, they looked at it again because they, well, I think he might be talking about the original entry. Well, look, either way you're looking for evidence. Well, yes. The domestic yeah. And the re-review. Exactly. Yeah. So it was discovered. In, Actually, in re-review. Review. That's not a right word. By re-review. Way. Why don't you say review? Because re-review I think that, review I think has that re- encapsulates it. You don't need to re 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 You don't need to do re-re. What show was that? Re-re. There was a re yeah, yeah. What re-review. show was that from? <laughs> All right. As I said, I'm very educated. So we have a case, uh, a cop out of DeKalb, Illinois. Okay. There's this. You're talking about Zach. Yeah. What's up, Zach? All right. So the, the, the whiskey was kicking in at 9 a.m., by the way. So, all right. So listen to the, right? So he says, I'm a sergeant at the DeKalb Police Department in Illinois. Okay. First of all, God bless you. Illinois is a very, very tough place to work in protecting their community. They, make, mm-hmm. they, they put up a lot of barriers for safety for those communities. Mm-hmm. Additionally, I'm a canine handler. I'm also in charge of our canine program. All right. Our neighboring agency has some canines as well as we have used them for a couple of times. You know, so they're just doing, you know, mm-hmm. helping each other. Out. MOUs, Good. right? Mem- a memorandum of understanding. And they want to sniff vehicles. You know, they help us sniff vehicles. We help them and so forth. They have been asking the occupants to exit the vehicle before conducting the canine sniff on the vehicle. I have a couple of concerns with this. One being that if the occupants are out of the vehicle, then th- when the free air sniff occurs then this can affect the probable cause to search the occupants. Mm. Because, right, the logic is if they alert, if the dog alerts while they're in the car, then, well, maybe the logic is that it's on the them. the person is the container in the car. <laughs> okay. Secondly, depending on how long it takes for occupants to exit the vehicle, it could be an extension of the stop. Also, asking all the occupants out of the vehicle prior to conducting a canine sniff is not part of a routine traffic stop, and I worry that we end up in a motion to suppress over these two things. All right. Let's now, take one thing. Yeah, at a time. so there's a couple things going on there. Let's sure. talk about sniffing vehicle, sniffing the vehicle with the people in the car. Okay. What's your thoughts on that? Well, out. Uh, I have not ever been a canine handler, and from what I've seen, most of the time the handlers like to have the people out, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, and legally, they can. Right? You can have people. Ex- no, they, they cannot. Right. What what case do you have to say that people can come out of the car? 
Then we can direct them out. Yeah, you, you, got, have, you have uh, case law on this? Yeah, you got Maryland versus Wilson and Pennsylvania versus Mim. So driver so, and passengers, you can have them exit without technically any additional justification. And why? We're, why? We're going to have a reason because you don't do it reason. on every stop. You know, you're going to have an answer when you, if you, hey, you had my client step out of the car this time. Why? Great chance to use the word because I had your client step out of the car because. Now, um, I, I, yeah, I was pushing back on that because um, a lot of cops will use Pennsylvania versus, Pennsylvania versus MIMS for everybody, which is fine. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't expect cops to know case law, you know, the names. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, in, even in that case, the cop actually had a reason. There, uh, mm-hmm. He was considered like armed and dangerous or something right. like that. So, all right. So, fine. We can get him out. Yes, we can. We should have a reason. This, this, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you agree, though, that having them in the car helps have a nexus or helps build additional probable cause as to them? So a person is different than a container. Mm-hmm. So when your dog alerts or you get that probable cause establishment from that, it allows you to search the vehicle where narcotics could be. Very powerful search. It is. Yeah. Just about anywhere. That's right. However, for you to search a person, you have got to establish a nexus to them. Yep. You have got to establish a, a probable cause nexus to them independent of just that dog smelling inside that car. Yep. There's many factors that you go through, you know, yep. maybe, you know, abnormal nervousness, you know, the recent arrests, uh, where they're placed in the car, observations of when you walked up. There's a number of things, but yeah. you've got to show, give me a why. You've yep. got to give me a nexus to them. And don't, you don't get it for free. You know, I read a case uh, back from 1940, the Rye, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, the... 49? I want to say 49. Mm -hmm. Those gas stamps. Gas stamps. Yeah, there you go. So what what happened there was an officer had probable cause that there was illegal gas stamps because the World War... Actually, it wasn't 49. Well, it might have been decided 49, but it happened in before 45, right? So, but anyway, the point is, is that the officer had probable cause that there was illegal gas stamps, you know, in this vehicle. So Mm -hmm. he... He um he got the he got the, car, the 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 occupants out and he started searching the passenger right and he found illegal gas stamps on him too okay and the U.S. Supreme Court suppressed it and they said basically just because you have a guy that's in a vehicle under the Carroll Doctrine he doesn't lose his personal protections just because he's in a vehicle that can be searched it's almost like you know Mike I think it's almost like having a search warrant for a house and you have a friend over for dinner and he's there during the search warrant we can seize him that's mm-hmm. fine but you get you don't get to search him just because he's in the house it's very similar he's not a container right you have to have you know probable cause for him all right so all right so look the next thing is we're we're good with taking him out yes we do understand though would you agree that when the dog if the dog alerts with them in the car it does help prove that maybe the drugs are on them yes that there's some more articulation to it there. Yes. And, I, and I think a good case for that is a case called Anchanda, mm. now the 10th Circuit. <laughs> now, that case is often used to basically articulate that, hey, uh, people in car plus dog alert equals search a person. Correct. That's what people use it for. But there's a lot of differences in that case. Was uh, I know you know the sort of border search. It was, it was, it was, it was the Border Patrol. Driver was, and only occupant. No, no, he was, no, it was, it was the, the driver uh, was and there, a passenger. And a passenger, right. But the driver was on Chondo, was on Chondo, which is always easier to search because right, it's I'm driving the car, and you're, the yeah. responsible one for it there. So that's right. Which sounds to me like Nexus. OK, so <laughs> so on Chondo is, you know, it, you know, so first of all, and on Chondo, a lot of people surprising, like people know on Chondo like they do Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania versus Mims, like they just really know this case. I think because a lot of instructors teach it, but I do think incorrectly. But um, here's what happened on Chondo. They're in the car when the dog is run around two times. Mm. two alerts are you sure <laughs> totally totally and they get the they get, they get the, the occupants out no evidence found in a car mm. and on chandra's the driver and he says to the border patrol agent you're not going to find evidence in that car mm. so, so do we have yeah that's a that's a pretty profound statement you're not gonna you're not going to find it in there. So what was he saying? I know. Guys? <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, like, when, when instructors use on Chondo to say that we can search passengers, well, let's start with the first thing. On Chondo's not even the passenger. And Chondo's not involved in that case. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the passenger are, is not yeah. involved in that case. He's not litigating. He probably pled out. Yeah, he didn't have a pocket full of gas stamps. <laughs> yeah, a pocket full of gas stamps. <laughs> all right. So that's the next thing. So, all right. 
get the people out, check. Does it, does it help to have the people in the car? Yes, but it's not automatic. You can search them. Yeah. Now, what about the extension issue? So the way it's worded here, um, he, you know, if we're running this canine without reasonable suspicion, well, that's definitely going to be an extension issue. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Well, okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying that if we have no reasonable suspicion and we're holding up the stop to run the dog. To run the okay, dog, okay. yes. And again, maybe I'm reading that. Uh, no, 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 that's right. That's takes, right. also asking occupants out of the vehicle. Because it says here, routine traffic stop. So well, the one thing I want to go ahead. Just saying, if it's routine traffic stop and you're delaying to wait for the dog, run the dog, then I think you've got some concerns there. So Correct. Maybe... But I think that if all we have, and this is a timing issue, mm -hmm. is just getting people out of the car. Well, look, we can always get people out of the car. And if that adds time, mm -hmm. that won't be the issue. No. The issue will be other time added to run the dog. Yes. So And it's be... uh, there's been a bunch of cases that could be minimal yeah. down to the seconds, right? uh motion express over two things so there so yeah you, you just gotta be aware of that and look, there's ways to fix that of course we talked about you know if you're you know inevitable downtime backup officer there's you know there's ways to correct that and making sure you don't extend stops that way but just uh, yeah. just be aware of that for sure all right so <laughs> yeah exactly so that's that is a problem we, we, we on this scenario i think at the end of the day i think you know uh jonathan's right we're going to want to see we're going to want to see reasonable suspicion here. Yeah. Okay. So here's a case that is really applicable to our California officers. Okay. And this officer is from Fresno PD. If an officer knew that somebody um, was on a, had a fourth amendment waiver, can they search that person's home hotel at any time? Okay. So here's the, there's the facts. So basically what happened here is officers learned that, oh, I'm sorry, a hotel told police officers, Hey, Man, room 101, that guy has a lot of guests. Like, he's like, there's something up with him. In fact, sh he or she, the, the hotel, thought it was human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I think the cops are thinking, well, it's probably not human <laughs> trafficking. It's probably just drugs. I was laughing. I was in the San Francisco airport this weekend. Yeah. And human trafficking sign on yeah. thing. I'm like, you don't you know yeah. my story? Yeah. Yeah, be on the lookout for the, for the I, house. I was on the lookout for it. Yeah, be on the lookout for the massage parlor, you know? Right. So as I'm getting the massage, like, so what Mike is talking about, I was in, um, <laughs> I was in Chicago O'Hare Airport and they had, you know, human be on the alert for human trafficking. And they had signs of they had pictures of examples of human trafficking. And one of them was a masseuse and a housekeeper. I'm gonna call 911 next time I see a, a housekeeper changing the sheets and saying, Hey, I got her, you know. <laughs> While you're in your room getting your oh your well, I'm getting, yeah, just call it a double whammy. I'm getting the masseuse. As housekeeping changing the oh sheets. Oh my gosh. Now, if I'm getting a masseuse that's housekeeping changing the sheets, you might want to arrest me for something. Yeah. Something going All on. right. So um, <laughs> so th this this uh hotel is like, hey, I think there's human trafficking going on. Mm -hmm. The cops are thinking drugs. And they look up the the guest at the at the room and he's on paper. Yeah. He is mm -hmm. a he's on probation for a misdemeanor, but apparently he has search clauses. Now the the cops are wondering, hey. Can we get that key from that hotel and just do a search on the hotel um, without any reason? Well, you know, there's no reasonable suspicion probably yet. There's a lot of people visiting a hotel room. Mm -hmm. we're, we're close, but no cigar. Do you think that's uh, that's lawful in California? What I know of California, they have pretty powerful no search or search clauses mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, one of the best in the in the nation for sure. Yeah. They actually uh, do, so yeah. again. There's a couple of questions I have. It's his room. He's the one responsible for it. So does he have access to meaning control over it? And if he's got a, a, a search clause in there, I think we're fine. Do you know, um, I think you're right. So there is a case, I don't have the name off of the top of my head, but, you know, but there's a case out of California where, and this is the case I'm going to use here, right, to kind of show that this is going to be okay, mm -hmm. is that cops arrested a... Um, a person for whatever, okay? Now, the person had a fourth amendment waiver. So they take him to jail, and during the search incident to arrest, they found a hotel key. Mm. You know, maybe it's like the name of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, the the Best Western, you know? And they go back to the Best Western. They don't even talk to this guy, right? They go back to the Best Western, and they say, hey, is uh, Johnny, you know, is John Doe live, staying here? And they're like, yeah, he's in room 101. And they're like, okay, so he's in room 101. So they go to that door. They open it up. They search it. They find contraband. What did the 
uh, what did the court in uh, in California say? It upheld it, right? It's incredible. Yeah, I don't know a lot of the stipulation and what they sign off is you know, vehicles, homes, whatever. It's yeah. it's it's delineated out in there. So, but yeah. but but <laughs> but most states though are not like that. Okay, Nevada's Nevada, not like yeah. that. You know, Idaho's not like that. Washington's not like that. So, mm -hmm. California surprisingly is very special with this. They they have a very a very powerful uh, search clause. Now, the 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 law says that you cannot conduct these searches if they are arbitrary and capricious. Fancy lawyer talk. <laughs> it is. So arbitrary. Can do you think uh do you have any examples of arbitrary? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, arbitrary could mean just not having so so the, do we do these searches in yeah, order for the yeah, have a reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you're doing it. Why are you doing it? You're doing it to, you know, to enforce to to for the um what do they say? They you're doing you're doing these search and seizures of these fourth members because it is to try to maintain or you know in, enforce compliance with their terms, right? Capricious. Now, this is the one where probably your, most of your cases are capricious is another word, another word for harassment. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a, like kind of I don't like you in there, some That's underlying. Right. I'll get you kind of deal. So let me give you an example of, of capricious. A person who's on paper complains about a police officer. He mm -hmm. says, this guy is rude, discourteous, racist, whatever. And the cop says, man, you know, you're trying to get me in trouble. I'm going to search your house. And when the officer is asked on the stand why you did it, he really has no good reason. So it's arbitrary. Mm -hmm. And it seems capricious because you seem like you're trying to just punish him. All right. Yeah. All right, so the answer for my friends are we are good to go. Ah, Zach has a stoner. <laughs> is that the is that the hotel case, Zach? That's the hotel case. <laughs> Not at the Crystal Crystal Inn. Inn. <laughs> Mario's clearly been to our classes. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I can actually pull up that case. You know. All right, what time is it? It's uh, so, so we have a little bit of time. All right, a couple minutes, right? Um. All right, this is a good one. So this is from Rocky Mount Police Department in North Carolina. That sounds fun. My agency uses ShotSpotter to detect gunfire throughout the city. We constantly respond to ShotSpotter activations, which are plotted within a, the curls of the property. And we collect the physical evidence, spent car, uh, uh, cartridge casings, and so forth that are located at the scene. Is this, does this act violate the Fourth Amendment? Or does the our investigation in the shots fired give us a right to bend through the curlage and retrieve the physical evidence? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. huh? That's a good one. Well, we touched on curtilage a little bit already. These are areas that are protected like the home itself. Protected like the home itself. So shot spotter is a great tool. And from what I've seen of it, it can be very accurate. It's I mean, like, I think within, you know, at least put you in the right several feet. I mean, yeah, put you in the right spot. That's for sure. So the question is, can we go get this evidence that's on? Was well, it described well, on, or was it casings or the, whatever? The maybe? Shell casings. Shell casings in, in the backyard. In the backyard. So, protected like the home itself, right? So, is there an argument for any sort of uh, emergency, urgency, or destruction of that? Okay, maybe, but just to go into somebody's yard to go onto their curtilage without some sort of exception. I don't think so. There's 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 some protections there. Now there may be that argument because again, is uh is there necessities that easily removed, destroyed, what's well, going on? That's yeah. true. You know, but isn't my take on it though is is their agency based on the shot spotter? Inherently, yes. Someone's someone fired a gun. Okay. Right. Uh so is there a dead person, a mm -hmm. shot person? Mm -hmm. So inherently there. But now you got to talk, but now we're talking about the case. No, no, but but, but my view on it, though, is mm. you tell me if you agree. Let's get into the backyard first. Are we even there lawfully? And then if we see the shell casing, well, that changes things. Okay, so that answer that question. Do you think? Okay, so that, you want to put my feet in the backyard because we're concerned that somebody is shot or there's said, an put, exigency. You said put my pee in the backyard. I put your feet in the backyard. Oh, you said feet. Why are you peeing in somebody's backyard? Put your feet in the backyard. Okay. All right. So we're in the backyard because we are trying to locate a victim. Uh, some sort of uh, well. Emergency aid, right? We're emergency aid. We're trying to find if somebody need our help, right? Is there somebody that's not? Yeah. So if we can justify getting in that backyard to look for a, someone that's got a hole in them, then now if we see this casing, it's a, a plain view observation because we have the right to be there. Gotcha. And we have the right to see it. Yep. Now we can grab and go. 
I think that, uh, you know, I know shot spotter pretty well. I know that it's a very good, you know, uh, system as far as it's very reliable. Um, they have human, I don't know if you know this, but there's Definitely, human beings behind There's it. an analysis that's right. the computer and which is kind of weird. I think mm -hmm. a, a computer might be better, but right. they so the shots come out on the microphones. It's sent to people in DC or mm -hmm. whatever it is where they have this their 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 center. They kind of confirm that it's consistent with shots fired. You think that's for the testimonial part? Like, I think uh well, they're not gonna come to court, I don't think. I don't think shots fired no. come to court. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think it's just to kind of give like confidence to your um, uh, agency administrators mm -hmm. that's just not some computer you know saying yeah there's shots fired they want okay. a human to like at least have confidence it's that not a firecracker or... it's not a firecracker and so it sounds like you know so the, the human ear hears it they're trained they send it back to the agency which sometimes can take like 45 seconds or so okay so there's a delay there's a, there's a delay mm -hmm. and then we go out to, and go to the call shane says you know how long was the how how old is this called of course that's that's relevant that's a fact but most of the eight most of the people i'm sorry most of the agencies that have shot spotter are urban areas this is not you know, Branson, Missouri, mm -hmm. right? This is New York. This is, you know, Las Vegas and so forth. So you're going to have basically units on scene pretty quickly. Pretty quick. All right. So I think we're in the backyard. And I think we're... We're in the backyard because... Because of exigency, there okay? Go. Because we're there to, you know, find dead bodies, maybe st stop a person from shooting more and so forth. Now we look on the ground with our flashlight, we see, you know, shell casings in plain view. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an, an actual case um, where... A cop was in the backyard during for a shot spotter, and he saw a shed. And the shed is is off the ground. I think they do that for tax purposes, by the way. If the shed is off the ground, it's not a permanent structure. Really? Yeah, I know this for that is that property in Idaho, oh. and that's what they do in Idaho. So if it's off, it's <laughs> if it's like two by fours on, it, it's not, it's not, it's not a structure. Wow, it's just a piece of, you know. So anyway, floating shed. It's a floating shed. <laughs> so they don't have to pay the property tax. I don't know. I, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So he looks under the floating shed and he sees the gun and he retrieves it. And mm -hmm. one thing leads to another. We have a felon in possession. Mm -hmm. Are you good with that? Is there, uh, can you reasonably find a dead body under that? Absolutely not. Unless shed? you have a, a, a garden gnome. A garden gnome would fit under garden that. Gnome, then but I, not a, you know. I think there's a problem there. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shed happens. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right it does, Mario. Shed happens. <laughs> All right. All right. So you want to do one more? Yeah. Hey, hey, we haven't talked to anybody tonight. I know. Like, seriously. Anthony and I, you guys know this by now. We can sit here all damn night and talk. And talk search we and love talking hey, to you all. I'm going to give a, somebody a signed book. Search and seizure book and a challenge coin. If you get on this this microphone, just give us a question. Come on, what you have? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna smoke them out. Come ask on. ask a question. Ask any search and seizure question. Well, now you know you got them. You know Cheers. you got the questions. Yep. What you got, Sean? You got anything? All right, Matthew. You gonna you gonna come on? We got Matthew. Matthew has something. Brooks got something. Come on. Hey, Rick, just, oh, I got it. Yeah. Matt, you typing, hopefully. Hopefully Matt's typing. Huh? Hopefully Matt's typing. Um, I may... Oh, Sean, so, you got something or so Brooks, Brooks? Brooks, did you uh, reach out to Brooks? Yeah. So Brooks, you'll see something on your screen that says, uh, you know, activate mic or, you know, confirm because we can't just turn your mic without your permission. Click unmute. There it is. Click unmute. Can, can you hear me? What's up, Brooks? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up? Um, so um, is running a serial number on a gun when you find it legally where it's supposed to be at. Is that considered a search? <laughs> I love it. So look, Brooks, before you go away, first of all, what state are you in? I'm in South Carolina. I love it. So you, you're, let, let's say you make a traffic stop on a person for speeding. They have right. a firearm and you, know, you want to detain the firearm during the traffic stop. Is that kind of where we're going with this? Yes, sir. And they, they have a, they, let's just say they have no concealed weapons, by, you know, uh, concealed weapons permit. 
and yep. you have no reason to believe they're, they're a prohibited person. They're not abnormally nervous. They're just, they're, they're me and they're me and Mike. Okay. We, we love our guns mm -hmm. and you want to seize it during the traffic stop and you want to add it to the, the NCIC uh, or you want to run on your MDT. That's the question. Yes, sir. I love it. All right. I have your answer. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, can you see it? It's in plain view. Okay. So that's the yeah. first question. When you open so up the glove box and you're retrieving, retrieving paperwork out the glove box and you didn't tell me there was a gun in there, yes, I can see it. Okay. So, you, you, you know, I think, are you fine with also seizing this gun? Yes. It's not hard to seize guns during traffic stops, no, constitutionally. No. no, it's fine. The vast majority of states are going to allow you to seize it, mm -hmm. even if the person is not a private. If you don't, even if you have no reason to believe they're a private person, you can seize it as a matter of safety. Yes. So the, the gun is in, the, the serial number is in plain view. Now, running it. Don't extend the stop to do it, but I, you can run it. Well, what if it does extend the stop? What if we, what if we look at the body cam and, you know, or we can mm -hmm. prove through dispatch right. that it added, mm -hmm. you know, a minute, 45 seconds to run that serial number to do NCIC? Because like you said, the, the person is, you have no indicators that are prohibited and no reason they shouldn't have it and, and is as a here. So are you running a, a, a new investigation? Are you conducting a new investigation to run that, that serial number? To run that serial number. I think it's going to be your, kind of your I think dope. the answer is, look, I think the, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually pretty confident in this answer. Mm -hmm. I think the answer is that you, you can't add time to the stop yeah. because there's, there's no reason to, with the scenario we, we gave, there's no reason to believe that that person is committing any crime. Mm -hmm. And you cannot chase daisies here. You can't chase other, you know, like hunches. Just start looking for you can't, stuff to see what you find. That's right. right. You can't just start chasing these other, you know, these investigations mm -hmm. and adding time to the traffic stop. So, you know, it might be one issue to, um, to ask the people, you know, what they do for work or, hey, that's a nice car. Mm -hmm. You know, when was the last time you waxed it? <laughs> versus <laughs> you know running a gun to be stolen property yeah and so without something without something about mm -hmm. some reason so there's two pieces of advice here and uh, john that's something i was going to bring up here in a second talk about manipulation yeah, we're gonna talk about that in a second mm -hmm. so because that does happen with some of these guns now um, let's add drugs to the mix go ahead let's add drugs to the mix say you know locate a little bit of i don't know cocaine in the center console whenever he lifts it up looking for his his registration and it's clearly in the glow box and then he opens up the glow box and there's a gun in there i'm i'm, I'm good with it now the, the reason i'm good with it is for several reasons so but one of them gun. is but isn't it illegal in south carolina to have guns and a drug a, a, a gun and drugs depends on how much you got okay well at least you have reasonable suspicion you got you have some got an investigation yeah. yeah, but also it is. Look, you're not a federal agent, you know, unless you're a TFO, a, t a task force officer. But yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, but the thing is, like, <laughs> you are, you, you know, look, I'm. I don't think the courts are going to have a lot of heartburn when you have a gun and drugs. Like, at least it's yeah. the guy is is in, involved in criminal activity. Mm -hmm. There's determinations to made. Are they? Could they be a prohibited person in these circumstances? Yeah, yeah, you've, yeah, you've got an investigation going on there. For Look, sure. I, I'm good with that. I'm just, I'm, I don't think the 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 guy that's, you know, oh, we we crashed. Okay, <laughs> hey. So we don't have like the guy that is has nothing going on except speeding and a gun. We should not add time to the traffic stop. Now, what Mike said earlier is that there are ways to chase these hunches. Or to pursue these, you know, these investigations without violating people's rights. Mm -hmm. There's four ways. Number one is consent. Hey, you got this gun. Hey, can I run this gun to make sure it's not stolen? If they say yes, they are agreeing to add time. Number two is multitasking. Mm -hmm. You know, you you can type and talk on to dispatch at the same time. I guess you like hit the mic, you know. <laughs> right. Um, that may not work. But the other one is unavoidable downtime. While you're running somebody. You also add the the serial number to dispatch for them to run. So once you get their back their their um, their wants history, you go back to the traffic stop, and if they also come over the radio and say, "Hey, by the way, that gun you gave me is um, is stolen," maybe that helped. You might be tying them up a little bit, a little bit. Maybe. And then the final one is the backup officer, which is the best choice mm -hmm. because the backup officer can do whatever they want without violating people's rights. Now, the other thing, so this, it is a concern. You should have at least a reason to believe that the person, you know, uh, may be prohibited and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the manipulation issue. So imagine that you have a, um, 
I remember on the traffic stop, I had a, uh, it doesn't matter, but it was a Ruger like P95. Good gun, by the way. In fact, I owned one. I sold it. And what they say is oh, never hold sell. Hold on. You sold a gun? I, I've sold. I thought three, you kept them all. <laughs> I've sold three guns in my life. And every single one I regret. Oh, man. In fact, one of the best one was a H&K USP 45 Tactical. That gun today is worth like 16 I mean, just to buy it new, is $1,600. And I sold it for like $700. But I needed a crack. And it was <laughs> a bad habit, my friend. At, at the time, it was worth it. Yeah. But well, so when I had this P95, it had a Hogue grip on it, which is that rubber. Oh, okay. And, I, and the serial numbers on Ruger's are on the grip, not underneath the, you know, the. So I had to lift it up to look at the serial number. Now, mm. when I ran that, I had no reason to believe this guy was unlawful. In fact, he had a CCW, which is a concealed weapons permit in Nevada. And I still ran it. And I didn't, you know, I didn't think about it at the time. But right. going back and, you know, looking back at it, I don't think that was lawful. The search? It's a search. I'm manipulating it. Mm -hmm. I'm taking up time. There's no reason to believe he's a, a primitive person. Take a Glock. The Glocks have serial numbers underneath the, the accessory rail. Mm -hmm. You take off the, the light. It's a search. It is a search. Now, the, the new Glocks have the serial number on, on the, uh, the barrel. Right. So maybe that's a ba you know, better way to, to slice it. Mm -hmm. What about in a holster? What do you think? Yeah, so Jonathan says uh, it's a habit, nothing intentional. But it doesn't matter, yeah. actually. What <laughs> matters is, is it a search under the Fourth Amendment? You know, is is am I intentionally trying to manipulate it? And that that's the part. Right. You think same thing in a holster? Taking it out of the holster to see it? Yeah, Mario says U.S. versus Jones. Now, yeah. here's the deal. I'm good with the holster. Right. Uh, why do you think? I'm good. At the, let's say we unload it. Are you good okay. with that? Are you, are, you, are you good with unloading the gun? Yes. You think the law yeah, requires yeah, it? Yes, yes, but I got a caveat to that. Hey, tell me. Don't do it all the damn time. You know, like, yeah. there's people that this country we could carry guns, and <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome, Kenneth. Am I looking? What am I looking at? What are you looking at here? Kenneth Clark. Yeah. I, I. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, oh yeah. But you know, be reasonable about it. Like, I'm not going to, when I make a stop, someone tells me, hey, I'm, I'm CCW. <clears throat> I'm, you know, a law abiding citizen. I'm going to get choked up on it. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to, I'm going to take apart their gun. Hey, I'm not going to, you know. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, we're going to get Kenneth on the line. I'm going to be reasonable. About but can it. I tell you something? Like, when I became more mature yeah. in law enforcement and people said, hey, I'm a CCW holder, mm -hmm. I have a firearm, I, I want to give them like a fist bump. I said, mm -hmm. you know what? You've gone through a background check. Mm -hmm. You're telling me you have a gun. Your hands are 10 and 2. You ain't the guy I'm worried about. I'm, I'm worried about the game banger that doesn't tell me shit about his gun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a totally And show it off story. a little bit. Look at this chrome piece. Yeah, Which, a totally right, get, story. get Kenneth on the line. What, what have you said? You don't go for yours? Hey, you don't go for yours. I won't go for <laughs> I'm mine. Go for mine, right? <laughs> so we have an accord. That's what we have right now. We've <laughs> we, come, have, we have an understanding. We've got an understanding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, so Ken, what's up, brother? Hey, hey um, quick question for you. Can you ask a passenger um, about the origin of their trip and also the relationship to the driver uh, what's the, just i just i like to know what state you're in what state are you in nebraska i love it all right so i, I have your answer uh what do you think mike so uh, just uh, uh kenneth right we're just talking about uh, just a traffic stop yep yep traffic stop uh you know how we normally ask drivers yeah, you know where so, you come from where you're going can you ask the same question to the passenger it's related to the mission of the stop. You know, there's, you know, where you're going, where you're coming from. Those things are, you know, related to what, what you got going on. So look, here's the deal. The answer is that I, I see very few cases that push back an officers from doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. However, the best case I saw that just the one we teach at blue to gold is where the officer at least articulated that the driver's travel plans were a little hokey. Yeah. And you know, his, um, you know, his knowledge of the passenger was a little thin. Like, what's the guy's last name? I don't know. How long have you known him? For over a year. Come on. And now I you're mean, starting to breadcrumb a little bit, right? A little yeah. breadcrumbs, yeah. right? So, Kenneth, the answer is that I don't see, like, I don't, I wouldn't worry about it too much, especially in Nebraska. Now, you couldn't do this stuff in, like, you know, Oregon and Washington, which is um, crazy states. But I think you're going to be okay. But if, man, if you could just tell the court, you know, um, why you know maybe why the plans just didn't really add up mm -hmm. then you're golden does that make sense like 
Maybe just, they're they're going on vacation, right? Um, but they just evidence of hard driving. Like, yeah, we're going to see the uh, the four corners, right? Um, you know, that's Colorado, Arizona, and so forth, New Mexico. Um, and we're going to see the four corners of of the states, but they're like leaving no time to enjoy the drive. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Does that make sense, Kenneth? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. No, you're welcome. Thanks for jumping on. All right. Yeah, exactly. I like what Mario's saying. Mario's pretty hitting on all cylinders. So. All right. So, look, I mean, unless, yeah. I mean, that's what we got. We try to keep this about an hour or so. Um, this We're an hour and 10 minutes. That's what I have. If anybody has a last minute question, uh, say it now. Rick, you're monitoring also, uh, Rick, the producer, is monitoring, uh, you know, YouTube. But if you have a last minute question, from mom? my mom had one. <laughs> no, wait, I think, wait, she did earlier, right? Does she want to add, mom, are you want to add, you want to get on this live show? And add, uh, you crazy <laughs> kook. <laughs> I think she said that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, look, I think we're, I think we're good to go. Any parting thoughts? Um, I got a lot of friends and family in Hawaii. So just be thinking about them over there. They got fires. Uh, Maui's on fire. And Maui's on fire? Maui's on fire, literally. And oh, wow. So yeah, my cousin's over there and a lot of cops over there are doing a lot of hard work over there saving people. So just keep. Hey, Matt, you got a question? What was he saying? The, the... Oh, he posted already. I posted at 10 o'clock. At the ten o'clock mark, hmm. what does that mean, Rick? I don't. I don't know what your hand puppets sign. What's you, that mean, Rick? You there, Matt? You're muted. Oh, Matt. All right. Hello. Who has who mood, muted? All right. I don't know what it is. Are we muted, Rick? All right. Yeah. All right, guys. We're gonna uh, end off. I don't know what it is. All right. Or you eat your time. I don't. I can't go back in time, Matt. We run a right. It's like yeah. What kind of operation do we run here? We got. We got. We only have one producer. Okay. Yeah. Time travel happened. Yeah. We don't have a. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you all, all right, very guys, much. Thank you so much. Again. All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>